When people conjure up mental images of the US military, they tend to focus on things like guns, tanks, and battleships. While these images do exemplify certain military activities, it is also important to recognize that military research and development employs some of the brightest minds on the planet and has always been at the forefront of the expansion of scientific and technological knowledge. We either wouldn't have many of the tech advances we enjoy today, or they would have come to fruition years later if not for military research. With that being said, as a former U.S. Army veteran myself, I am pleased to bring you the top 10 U.S. military contributions to science and technology. So go ahead and target and execute that like button. And if you feel like we've earned your subscription by the end of the video, go ahead and hit that one too. Now let's get into it. Number 10. Aerosol Bug Spray During World War II, soldiers stationed in tropical parts of the world needed an easy way to kill mosquitoes that could potentially infect them with malaria or other bloodborne diseases. Lyle Goodhue and William Sullivan, two researchers at the U.S. Department of Agriculture, or USDA, were tasked with developing a process for delivering insecticide as an aerosol spray in cooperation with the Department of Defense. The first bug bomb, as the soldiers called it, was patented in 1941. A long-standing partnership between the USDA and the Department of Defense has led to some other remarkable success stories. For instance, in 1949, engineer Robert Abplanalp patented a plastic valve for aerosol cans that was cheaper and easier to use by end users. He went on to found the Precision Valve Corps to market the invention and the company became profitable almost instantaneously. The aerosol can has since been refined and is now less harmful to the environment. So next time you're on a tropical vacation or taking a hike in the woods and you reach for that can of bug spray, just remember that you have the US military to thank for that instant relief from all those bugs. Number nine, the internet. The internet could and likely should warrant a place much higher on this list. However, most people are aware of the fact that the internet began its life as the brainchild of the US military. In spite of the bold claims by former Vice President Al Gore, who was not actually involved in the development of the internet until 1993, the US military was the first entity to create and use what we now know as the internet. They created Advanced Research Projects Agency Network, or ARPANET, which is considered the precursor to the internet as we know it today. It all started back in 1996 when a conference was held at UCLA and attended by members of various research and military organizations. The first ever computer-to-computer -computer message transmission occurred at that conference, and the message simply read LO, or LO, the intent was to send the word login, but the system crashed and only the LO went through. They were able to successfully recover the system and transmit the full word login at the conference, and the rest, as they say, is history. Since that time, the internet has grown to be a major part of our society and culture. It is the backbone of the modern economy and enables tasks like worldwide collaboration, customer service, and online banking. There are, of course, some less desirable outcomes that stem from the invention of the internet, but that would require a whole nother video in and of itself, so I'll go ahead and leave it there for now. Number 8. The Rodriguez Well Of all the items on this list, I'm guessing that the fewest number of people out there have ever even heard of the Rodriguez Well, or Rodwell as it is sometimes called. In spite of that fact, however, the Rodriguez well could prove incredibly important for the future of humanity, particularly when it comes to the potential for humans to expand to other planets. It is currently being used in polar regions, primarily at research stations. The rock well works by pouring hot water down a shaft. The well's cavity is formed at the point where the shaft ends. The shafts are usually more than 100 feet deep and the water is used to melt natural ice until it reaches the depth needed. Over time, the thermal water can cause rocks fall and break off. By continuously replenishing the body of heated water, 
the deep pool of melted water gradually expands and renews the supply of fresh water that can be pumped to the surface for use by homes or businesses. Inspired by the observation that sewage injected into Arctic surface eventually formed a pocket around 100 feet down which would not refreeze as long as more sewage was continuously injected, researchers found it also had this effect on process coolant. The average lifespan of a Rodriguez well is greater than seven years. Over time, cavities may deepen and the Rodriguez well will become inefficient to heat and recirculate water. At present, NASA is working with the U.S. Army to design a proof of concept for a new Rodriguez well that could be used in polar regions on Mars. With folks like Elon Musk setting goals of being on Mars in the 2030s, the Rodriguez well could be an instrumental part in accomplishing that dream. Number 7. Super Glue In the 1940s, several American companies were pitching in to help out with the war efforts. Eastman Kodak, most commonly known today for their Kodak cameras, was one such company. One of Kodak's inventors, Dr. Harry Coover, stumbled across a sticky substance while attempting to make clear plastic rifle sights for troops overseas. The sticky substance was of no use to them in making sights, so Coover and company abandoned the project for the time being. Over a decade later, in 1956, Dr. Coover eventually did file a patent for what would eventually come to be called super glue. Ironically, super glue was abandoned as being of no use to the war effort in World War II, but it would wind up being a savior for American troops in subsequent conflicts. Doctors used super glue to seal wounds during the Vietnam War, and it was still being used by frontline medics during the War on Terror well into the 21st century. It's always a best practice to visit a doctor in case of emergency, but if you find yourself deep in the woods with a gash that needs closing, you'll be glad you packed yourself a tube of this battlefield remedy to close up your wound temporarily. Number 6. Virtual Reality The U.S. military did not invent virtual reality per se, however, they did refine it into resembling what we think of as virtual reality today. The first invention that could be somewhat accurately called virtual reality was the Sensorama, invented by Morton Helig, who also happened to be a U.S. Army veteran. The Sensorama was a large machine that sort of resembled an old-school arcade racing machine. It used vibrations, visuals, and even smell to make users feel as though they were riding a motorcycle down a Brooklyn road. Fast forward to 1966, and military engineer Thomas Furness created the first ever flight simulator for U.S. Air Force pilots. After going through several iterations of designs and improvements, the flight simulator was sufficient to adequately simulate flight scenarios for Air Force pilots before they were asked to execute maneuvers in a multi-million dollar and potentially extremely dangerous, by the way, military aircraft. These flight simulators really laid the groundwork for what virtual reality has become today. So the next time you're tricking your friend into getting a jump scare on an Oculus Rift, remember that it was a U.S. Army veteran and an Air Force engineer who made it all possible. Number 5. Synthetic Rubber Synthetic rubber has been around since the early 20th century and was primarily used in the manufacture of bicycle tires. Early synthetic rubber was not particularly cost effective, nor was it easy to produce, but it was sufficient to keep up with the demand for bike tires. When World War II rolled around and there were countless vehicles rolling across the assembly lines to keep up with the war effort, the need for a more cost effective and easy to manufacture synthetic rubber became readily apparent. Not only did the military need tires for their vehicles, but it was also used in airplanes, battleships, and tanks. Fortunately, around that time, B.F. Goodrich, like many other American corporations, was working to support the war effort, and one of their scientists, Waldo Seaman, who came up with a new type of synthetic rubber called a Maripol, which was cheaper and more efficient to manufacture. The process by which B.F. Goodrich manufactured their rubber is still largely in use today, so take solace in the fact that the rubber keeping your car on the road 
is much the same as that that was used in support of the war effort. Number four, the microwave oven. The microwave was developed during World War II and it was used in conjunction with radar to help locate enemy vessels. In 1946, the Raytheon Company, who was and still is one of the largest military contractors, was assisting the military with their implementation of microwave technology. It wasn't until a Raytheon engineer working with the military noticed a candy bar melting in his pocket that he realized the potential of microwave technology to heat up food. Raytheon took this revelation and ran with it. Almost a decade later, the first commercially available microwave oven hit the market, but it bore little resemblance to those of today. The microwave was staggeringly large, coming in at around the size of a modern refrigerator. Obviously, the microwave oven has come leaps and bounds since then, and today, over 90% of American families are in possession of this handy device. It's strange to think of how different today's kitchens might have been if it weren't for this ingenious military innovation. And at number three, modern robotics. There have been several significant contributors towards the development and advancements in the field of robotics, but I would argue that some of the latest leaps and bounds in recent history have been made by Boston Dynamics in collaboration with the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA for short. Boston Dynamics' groundbreaking robot, Big Dog, was created as a possible means of helping dismounted troops to carry heavy equipment over incredibly arduous terrain. What made Big Dog truly unique was how it behaved so much like an animal in terms of tackling terrain or regaining its balance. The Big Dog had the agility of a deer. Big Dog's successor, Spot, has many of the same characteristics, but is smaller, smarter, more agile, and incredibly rugged. You can see Spot working at construction sites, medical facilities, or even dancing a jig in the club scene. DARPA has also helped Boston Dynamics fund another groundbreaking robot called Atlas. Atlas is a humanoid robot that is capable of incredibly complex tasks and is even able to execute a full backflip or do parkour. With all the breakthroughs in robotics that are sure to come over the next several years, remember that much of it is made possible through the Department of Defense research and funding. Number two, GPS. One of the most well-known military spin-off technologies is the now ubiquitous global positioning system, or GPS. After World War II and the space race with the USSR that followed, we were launching satellites up into the atmosphere in droves. So finding a way to utilize satellites as a means of triangulating one's position on the globe is a fairly logical progression of satellite technology. Originally developed by the U.S. military in the 1970s through 1990s, GPS helps with logistics, target identification, mapping, and unfortunately many other nefarious purposes. The military applications for GPS are easily apparent, and so too are all the practical ways that civilians have now put it to use. In something of an altruistic maneuver, the Department of Defense opened up their GPS satellite network for civilian use in the 1980s. This was a major advantage for developing things like Garmin Roadmaps and TomTom Tom GPS, which would have otherwise required a ton of investment in infrastructure for launching their own network of satellites and building the corresponding monitoring stations across the globe. Nowadays, we are still using the same network of satellites to make our lives easier in a plethora of ways, and it's difficult to imagine living without it. Let me know in the comments section down below if you're an old fuddy-duddy like me and you can still remember having to use a road atlas book to get around in an unfamiliar location. And finally, number one, digital cameras. Digital cameras were developed coincidentally by the Americans and the Russians during the Cold War. With all the spying going on during that time, it's no wonder that they developed this and other technologies at virtually the same time due to research being discreetly passed between one side and the other through nefarious hands. While digital cameras as a concept 
are an accumulation of several different tech breakthroughs across several different eras, much of the early development of what actually closely resembles today's digital photography can be attributed to Fairchild, Kodak, and Texas Instruments. In spite of being at the forefront of digital photography, Kodak actually famously balked at their inventors that no one would want to look at a photo on their TV before moving on to other, more lucrative pursuits. The issue was that there was precious little commercial viability for a digital camera at the time. The first widely available commercially produced digital camera was the Fairchild MV101, which would cost you a whopping $4,000, which was more than the price of a new car at that time. No wonder folks weren't lining up to purchase one. The only ones truly interested in digital photography at the time were NASA and the military. NASA could put a few cameras to use for digital photography in space, but the military was interested in employing them en masse because they would install them in satellites to take pictures of enemy activity. If not for the military putting digital photography to such effective use, we would likely be decades behind in the development of digital cameras, and they may not have proliferated in the way they have today. Today's digital cameras are far more scalable than their analog counterparts, which is what makes putting one into a phone or a tablet so easily feasible. So, the next time you take out your phone and snap a picture of a cute animal, say a quick word of thanks to the military for showing the world the true potential of the digital camera. So those were our top 10 US military contributions to science and technology. I hope you really liked the video, and if you feel like we've earned it, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll really help us grow. And hit the bell icon for more updates and notifications. Stay safe, and we'll be back soon with another video. Cheers.